Hello and welcome to Getting Candid with me, your girl Helen. Remember to keep subscribing to the channel and turn on the bell so that you don't miss out on anything that we upload on this channel. Now, a lot of things happened in a short space of time last week in the entertainment world and my next guest was entangled somewhere and all the happenings. I'm talking about Bobby East. I won't say much, but I think it's necessary to chat with him. Join me as I talk to him. Welcome back. I mentioned in the opening that I'll be chatting with uh, Bobby East, the man who owes me. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Helen. How do you start with that? Ah, it's the first thing I have to start because it was on this show when you promised that you would draw a painting of me and My I'll bad. show it on the show. My bad. Um, and I never showed the people. <laughs> do you have a hidden talent? A hidden talent. I can draw. Really? Yes. You should send me some work that you I will, I even will odds, do that. Even the old stuff. I, I try to see if I can find it. Yeah, but I can draw. I always used to think I wanted to be like a, a professional at that. Do paintings. Yeah. Then the music happened. And the music took over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should. I should send you my picture so maybe you can. An original by Bobby East. That would be dope. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I'm serious though. I'm serious too. And I'm going to show it on the show if he does it. Okay. Let's go. Right? I'm ready. Cool. I'll send that today. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I will bring the painting. But yeah, this is our third interview. You know, every yeah. every good story has got a trilogy. Yeah. So I think part three will be the best one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we'll be waiting for the paintings too. Yes. I, I owe you on that one. I've said it again on camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How have you been though? I'm well. I'm well. Yeah. Uh, I'm doing really well. How are you? No, no one ever asked a person that. Yes. They're being interviewed. I'm good. Excellent. I'm good. Recovered from a flu. Okay. Terrible one. Oh, wow. But yeah, I'm good. We're glad. Yeah. <laughs> so now I wanted to uh, let's. I want to start from. We've had so many chats about you uh, uh, growing up and stuff. Yeah. I think we've talked about literally almost everything. Yeah. That you are ready to share. Yeah. Yeah. How are you handling the social media backlash? Social. Yo, I'm gonna get right into it. Yeah. Actually. I will just. I want to go just straight into <laughs> it. Like, how is it going? How am I handling the social media backlash? Well, um. I'm one of the few people who has a little bit of experience in this. I think I've experienced it more than other regular people have. Um, I think sometimes I handle it better than I do. Mm -hmm. um, for now though, how I'm handling it is, my phone is right here, how I'm handling it, if you check my apps, I think I only have, I only left Instagram on here because it's just buddies on vacation, but everything yeah. else, um, Twitter, Facebook. This is my second time deleting my Twitter app. I just got rid of it just to detox okay. and, and deal with real people. Okay. I want for, if someone has got a concern, I'm still out in the supermarkets, I'm still doing shows. Um, I think I'd rather people come up to me as, as a human being and not like a handle or... Yeah some type of personality yeah. if you if you come to me as a person and you tell me your concerns i think it's easier to to connect that way i think i want to start handling things that way from now on yeah i saw you release an apology about the statement you made on the concerning the afrima when you yeah when you responded to people about their bank accounts yeah do you regret saying that I, and i knew because i was reading the comments like uh, the whole time then when i yeah. saw the response i was like this is somebody who is pissed and they'll just say something to hurt you back. Yeah. Like you, you are saying this, but... Yeah, um, I, I regret posting that, to be yeah. honest with you. Um, people have to understand. People have to understand. All of us are just having a human experience here on Earth, you know? Yeah. And the reason I put up the post in the first place is because I do not look at Slab D, the brand, I know Mwela Mwesonda, yeah. the guy who signed me when I was in Chunga. I empathize with him. Yeah. Because of that. How did he handle the whole thing? Because I don't think, I know you guys have thick skin and you've yeah. gone through it, but I mean, when you want, this, uh, uh, an international award nomination is huge. Yeah. And everyone, just to be nominated, everyone is excited. Yeah. But to think of, I'm going to, I, I can get this award if I get the backing from yeah. my people, I'll I'll beat people like Casper and your best. Then yeah. people are saying, no, we'll not support you. Um, this is the third time he's been nominated. He's yeah. never, the chances of him winning realistically from the get-go were very slim because of how we have a small country, yeah. small population compared to 
South Africa and all of the other people that were nominated, you know. So already it was at a, a disadvantage. I think it's one of those things when it first started trending, we're like, okay, maybe it's going to blow over, and then it's turned into such a huge movement. Yeah. It was so big yeah. that once, once I'm in your corner, that's the type of person that I am. Once I'm in your corner and you have my loyalty, then at the risk of my own, like, I'll, I'll stand up for you. Mm -hmm. So I know a lot of people were scared and whatnot. I wasn't going to be part of, like, the band one gone hate or to hang back. So I just decided to post a graphic. And that was it. And like I said, it's difficult to, to relate to a person when you think about them as a personality and not a human being. Yeah. Um, I think I just told you before I started shooting that my son was sick. So yeah. like three days, I was in the hospital. So when I was posting that graphic, I'm literally bedside. Mm -hmm. Just like any other human being queuing up at UTH getting meds for my son. So I post that and then I kind of forget about it. When I check on it again, there's like 2,000 comments and all of them are really, really bad. Yeah. And this is at a time where I haven't slept, I'm stressed. I'm just, at this point, I feel anger like any other person. I'm like, yo, this has gone on long enough. At what point does the perceived crime, like, at what point that, that, do you say, okay, now we've punished these people enough? Yeah. Or we have done enough? Yeah. Or stuff like that. And that's when I posted that. And when I posted it, I think a few minutes later, I thought, oh, yo, this was weird. But by the time I was deleting it, I know how... Screenshots had already... Or had already been made and whatnot. I was like, yo, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, like I said, it's difficult to empathize with a personality. Yeah. Did you at any point regret uh, doing the political song? The political... It's hard not to regret something when there's so much backlash. Like yeah. I said, all of us are only human. But in my human sense, again, I'm usually in two minds about it. Mm -hmm. I'm usually on the fence about it. There's times when the backlash is so much, but not necessarily the backlash per se. The times that I feel really, really bad is when I encounter someone who is, has followed me for the longest time, more than 10 years, and they've watched my growth. And the person like that, when they talk to me and they tell me, the reason I was disappointed is because A, B, and C. I see them as a person and as a fan, and I feel that that, that gives me a moment to think maybe this wasn't the best idea. Yeah. On the other hand, again, I think about freedoms of, of a person and choices that people have to make. Mm -hmm. Does it mean that when you are a fan, then all of our beliefs have to align? Oh, yeah. Does it mean that when we disagree on something, then it's enough cause to say, okay, let's take away this person's livelihood. Let us destroy them. We want to see them on their knees, crumbling. Yeah. Is that enough? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so now, uh, now there's a social media break that you've taken, and yeah. uh, for some people, they're saying, we'll see if we'll, we'll forgive you. What, what? So how long do you think this break will be, and what do you think uh, it will do for you? So here's the thing, when I took the break, and I think I went on Twitter and I said, I said something, I'm trying to remember the exact thing that I said. I said, I, I do not care if I'm liked, or something to that extent. And people were offended because they thought I am disrespecting my fans or whatnot. The reason I did that is this is something that I've mentally trained myself to do. Because you cannot leave your life walking on eggshells because you are scared that people won't like you or they won't forgive you. I have no control over that. I have no control over what people think about me or whether they're gonna quote unquote forgive my actions. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit of a backstory on how my mindset became like this. Years back, when I was still very, very young, this is a story that everybody knows. A person and I were dating and we made a video. Yeah. What most people don't know is that for a year, I was blackmailed over that video. Yeah. And I was sending money. And every time, the line was always the same. We're going to destroy your life. We're going to destroy your life. So every time someone says something like that to me, it triggers, yeah. it triggers that. And I kind of go into self-defense mode. I'm like, yo, how, how exactly are you going to destroy me? So I think about the things that you can take away from me. 
So if the general populace say, we're going to destroy you, what can they take away from me? They can take away um, my ability to be liked. They can take away my job, which is what I love singing, but they can take that away. But these are things that I've been processing on, on leaving in the first place. Like I said, this is our third interview. I'm glad that people can go back on YouTube and look at an interview from oh, three okay. years ago, yeah. two, day, two years ago. Two, two years ago? Right? Yeah, a year ago. A year ago. To the four years, four years ago, I think. And they will see that I've been saying for the longest time that I'm slowly withdrawing from music. Yeah. This is not something I'm saying now because, like I said, it is a very, it's a very fickle business. Yeah. And mental health and my family and everything like that is way more important than that. So when I say take it away, I'm not saying I hate my fans or something like that. It's something mentally where I'm, I'm prepping myself. I'm like, if, well, if that's what you're going to take away, what will I remain with? Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll have my family. I'll have, I've got a good head on my shoulders, I think. And I think when we had our last discussion, I told you I've been trying out different, we we're doing a tech uh, company with a friend of mine. Yeah. So essentially when I say do what you must. I'm not saying, yo, get out of here or whatever. I'm just saying I have no control. I can't tell you what to do. Exactly. I yeah. can't tell you what has been done has been done. Yeah. But I will not live my life always, hey, na papata, hey. And that is not an issue of pride, but it is draining. Yeah, I understand. I like that you've, you've talked about mental health. That's something that we rarely mm -hmm. talk about, especially concerning guys. So I just want to, to take a break and then I, I think I, I want to uh, ask about how you take care of yourself mentally. Mm. Yeah, so let's take a break and uh, don't change the channel. Welcome back, I'm still chatting with uh, Bobby East and I'm just thinking, mm. when, when mental, mental health is something that in Zambia we ignore, yeah. when some, especially when a guy comes, uh, comes up, yeah. guys to guys, when they tell them I'm going through this, it's more course and Mamuna. Yeah. I don't agree with that. That's why I really liked uh, Ebo Chungu's song, Mamuna Samarida, yeah. because I think everyone is allowed to express themselves. And, True. But how do you deal with that? I think you, from the time you six steps out yeah. it's been a lot of people don't really move on from that no they, 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 they at some time yes they love you it's bobby east yeah. at some point you see comments that will just bring yeah. it back yeah how how have you tried to say to stay sane um and like i said people who follow me like my my true journey they'll remember that i've talked about mental health and my issues with depression since maybe 2016 or 2017 yeah. when my brother died this is something that people need to talk about. Yeah. It's and not, when your brother died, sorry to, to cut you short, your yeah. brother died, those people saying that you sacrificed your brother. Exactly. So all that. All of that in the same year, you know, and there's, it, it takes a toll on the man. And the thing is like that, that, that song by Abel is so strong. When it came out, I messaged him because really when my brother died, I had to go and hide to cry. Because you couldn't cry in public, you're a man. Because everyone, Kosa boy, Kosa, that's, that's the only thing that they say. Yeah. Be strong, be strong. There's only so much strength that you can exhibit. And that is why sometimes I allow myself to act out. Yeah. Because I can't keep all of this stuff bottled in, you know. So now I've seen where the problem is. Because I'm always going to be liable to lash out at people, it is best before I'm misunderstood that I take a break from social media because that was, that's what creates the barrier between us. It can be used as a tool for a lot of things, but then again, it takes away the human aspect of it all. It is very difficult to look a man in the eye and insult him or insult his father, but it's really, really easy to write a comment. The and you send it and you go about your day. You don't yeah. know what you've done to the person yeah. on the other side of the phone. I, I like that. Have you ever, uh, have you ever been wanting to think about getting professional help to say, look, I'm going through this. Let me just go. go oh, I have me. been seeing someone for years. Oh, it's nice. important to yeah. talk to somebody. Yeah. It's important to talk to somebody. Anyone going through something like that, I yeah. encourage them to talk to someone. That's very good. Yeah. Very few, very few people, especially us in Zambia, will do that. Seek professional help, especially men. Of course. They would rather, and that's why I think we have high rates of suicide coming from, 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 the from male men. Folk. And from people, blah, nezenai. Yeah. Tenzo seka, pamanje manje, you don't know what the person is going through. I really, really hope we can pass, through, we can get through this stage because I think I, I, for one, wasn't really happy with the backlash that Slap got and then you guys, everyone else. 
that you've been getting, you have to keep apologizing. I know Mom, he also posted another apology. I just yeah. hope we can get over this and just move the, the on. Thing, the thing with Slap was really, was really, really sad for me. I understand the fans' anger. I understand where yeah. they're coming from. They felt betrayed. I just... The, the, the extent to which it was taken was shocking to me. Yeah. The type of, of, of comments, the type of um, treatment that was dished out to him was something reserved for murderers and rapists. And yeah. in my mind, I'm always trying to ask myself, does, does like the punishment fit the crime? Okay. How, before, how, how far can we go? Yeah, before we move on to the other thing, why, we, we've never known uh, like you guys, XYZ people that came from XYZ to be any anywhere near politics. Yeah. I think you guys have been a bit yeah. neutral from yeah. politics. What compelled you to do this political song this time around? Um, Was it a contract? People keep asking that. Yeah. Um, I'll, be, I'll be honest on this one. The contract did, uh, the offer did come through the company, but no one was forced, okay. to be honest with you. No one was forced. It was an issue of this work has come in. Are you willing to, to do it or not? Um, I cannot speak for everyone. Yeah. I had my personal convictions why I decided to do it. I weighed the pros and I weighed the cons. Some of them are super, like I said, it's difficult when you just look at the personality and you don't know the motivations behind it. Yeah. There's so much. Was money part of those motivations? The, the good pay? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, in a way, but it wasn't money for, for selfish gain or for selfish reasons. Like I said, there's motivations that people might not know. Of. People, for instance, don't know I've had bad health for the last three years and the same condition i have is the condition that killed my brother when he was 25 What's years the old condition, if you don't mind? well it's a hard condition i don't want to go too much into it but okay. it's the same condition i killed my brother when he was 25 years old okay. and this offer comes a time a few months after dave died and i saw the whole process of that yeah. in my head i'm thinking if if, if I go away, what, what, what exactly do I, do I leave for my son? Is it a name? Is it, I weighed the, the, the pros and the cons and no one forced me. Okay. I've owned up to, to that before. Okay. I've owned up to it. And the thing is, if, if other people, their morality is so on par that they can decline that offer, then they're better people than me. And okay. I'm, I'm okay to admit that here on camera, they're definitely better people than me. But at the end of the day, an offer was made and I agreed to do the record. Okay. Okay, uh, I think we can move on from that now. Yeah. I, I just really hope we can, everyone can move on. I don't, so I don't, think, I don't think they will, even when they do, <laughs> there was always going to be something somehow, somehow yeah. that it, it will come back. Yeah. But like I said, it's easier to do, to do that on social media. Yeah. There's... Let's, let's meet, let's have a conversation, let's impact. look me in the eye, talk to me as a man, okay. then see if you walk away with the same impression that you had of me before we started okay. talking. Now that you're signed under Kalandanya Music Promotions, are you still XYZ CEO? That is a, a very complex question to ask. And to, if I was to be completely honest, it's a conversation that Slap and I haven't had. But as things start, Really? Yeah, we haven't had this conversation. Why? So much has been happening, but... As yeah. things stand, both of us are uh, KMP artists. We are signed under KMP. Yeah. That's, that, that's the contract that I have, and that's where my obligation lies. Okay, so there is um, um, a lot of, like just a few weeks ago, we saw a lot of people leaving XYZ officially. Yeah. Is it still there? Because you guys are signed under KMP. Then mm -hmm. Now we're seeing a lot of guys going into the new age. What, is, what has been left of XYZ? Like I said, this is a conversation that I'm yet to have with Slap because a lot of stuff has been happening. Mm -hmm. I don't think, like I said, contractually we're assigned to KMP. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether Slap would still like to continue and hand over the reins of XYZ to somebody else. That is a decision he has to make as, okay. as the ultimate chair. I think that's a, a question best suited for him. Okay, how, how is it going being signed in the Kalandania? Um, I get, I get to make my music. I am not limited in, like no one comes to me and tell me you can't try this sound, I like that. 
Um, I get assistance with videos. There's some assistance that I never used to have when we were more independent than that, that I get now. So, yeah. honest on my end, I can't really complain about the label. Okay. Yeah. That's good. So there's a lot of artists under Kalandanya. How how uh, how difficult is it, or how easy is it to be recognized and say, okay, Bobby is also under our label and he needs this attention? Um, I honestly don't. Know. I can only I can only speak from my experience, mm -hmm. and my experience has been whenever I've needed assistance, it I call through. I call the managers at the office, and the assistance comes through, and they also give me because. There's times when I don't want to put out a lot of material, a lot of music. They give me leeway to kind of like go into my zone and think about what my next sh sound should be. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. Okay. Yeah. Are we expecting any new music from you anytime soon? I have been trying to record this album for the longest time. It's only, I'm very hard on myself. So every time I think I'm done with it, I think about something new that I want to I wanna put in it. But the album has to come out one way or another. <laughs> Are you going to give us Hate Me Part 2? I think so. Because I think you hinted something like that on your social media. I think so. I've been... The thing with Hate Me is it, it was such a powerful record. Yeah. And the reason it was powerful is because it was so honest and raw. So for me to put out Hate Me Part 2, the, I can't hide behind anything. I have to be totally vulnerable and just bring out maybe some truths that are uncomfortable. Okay, so mm. you know, before all this social media, whatever backlash is going on, yeah. you were our uncle, Uncle Malume, <laughs> Uncle T, giving us all this advice, relationship advice. Yeah. When did you become a, a relationship expert? Um, so that came out. Um, I'm a huge follower of uh, Will Smith. I love uh -huh. everything that he does. And there's a time when people asked him because he became so invested on Instagram. And they yeah. asked him why the sudden change. And he said, Back in the day, movie stars used to be like very secluded and you couldn't interact with the people. But the, the way social media has, has brought it out, it's like it's easier now to talk to your fans. Yeah. So with the, I created, I'm always creating characters. There's a Dewoka character, there's the Vanilla character. My hope was that Uncle Toxic would become a musical character on his own. Yeah. So, and, and my, my album, the one I'm recording, is based around like relationship stuff and okay. love stuff. So I really needed to engage with the people and see where their mind is at concerning certain things. You know? So I decided I'm going to interact as much as possible yeah. with the fans. And sometimes, like when social media is done right, it brings people together. And we're having a good time. We're laughing. I just yeah. wanted to make people happy. Yeah. Then boom. <laughs> a framer. No, but that was a good time. I, I would always laugh and say, okay, what, what, what are we being told today? This man has become a relationship expert. But that was good. That, that, that's I'm sure right. all my exes were like, shut up. Yeah, I'm sure so, some you were talking about them. They're like, no. Are you it's, sure? It's just an, I didn't and know. I and then toxic. That. Somebody mm -hmm. asked, say, mm -mm, you gave us uh, the, uh, the, the song was, um, the, the, oh, not this. Psycho Bay. Psycho Bay, then you've given us this uh, toxic, the one you did with uh, Kantu. Kantu. Yeah. But like, hey, are you talking about, is there a one woman that you had who was Psycho Bay? Was? No, for some reason, I just think uh, it's easier to gravitate towards like heartbreak records. Mm -hmm. They work the most. I think a lot of people relate to them more than they relate to like, I love you, I love you, like maybe one or two will work, but heartbreak, everyone just remembers like, oh, jam and ball out. And, <laughs> I, think, <laughs> and I think that's the reason that that, that works out. Okay, nice. Yeah. Okay, we've got in it. That, that was a smart move. <laughs> Uncle Malume. I wish I, can, I wish I can, I, I hope I can bring it back in, in due yeah. course, but like I said, social media break, I need a break. I love, I love my fans, but you, I, I, need, I need to clear my mind. No, but uh, I think it's nice for once in a while to detox from social media. Yeah. It, it's needed. The, the, the thing with social media is, I'm sorry if I'm dragging this, but you, you never really know. Because at one point, you grow big-headed and think people love you. Yeah. Or you will be depressed and think people hate you. When in actual fact, both might not be true. Everyone is just going through a human experience. Everyone is just existing. They might say something, but like I said, if it's something that they said once they meet you, then it carries more weight. But if they're just saying it against a persona that you've presented to them, then they don't really love or hate you. They're just impartial. Cool. What's your comment on New Age? On New Age? Those, everyone on New Age is people that I know. 
people like Josie, I, I introduced Josie to age. That's, that's my little brother. Even on new age is people that I know. And contrary to what people think, I have no issues with anyone on new age. Okay. To this day. That, and even when they put out music, I share as much of their music as I can. Yeah. What, what happened for age to live and create his own imprint is, I think, a story for him to tell. Yeah. I know a lot of people want answers from me, or what, but I don't think it's, it's in my place mm -hmm. to tell his truth. Okay. Unless he gave me the permission and said, I don't want to say it, you say it. Okay. Then maybe, but still, I wouldn't be able to articulate what he felt at the yeah. time. Yeah. Okay, that's, uh, that's nice to hear. Yeah. To hear from <laughs> you. How's your, how's your, how's your, you said your child is not too well. Yeah, tonsillitis is yo, it's, it's going around. I think when we were there, a whole three days, almost all the kids had it. But he's, he's, a, he's a happy boy, he's growing up well. I'm raising him the best way I can. That's nice. And his mom? She's well. Okay. <laughs> I know you don't like talking about that. You're looking at like, uh, she's well. She is well. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else that I've left out that you'd like us to talk about? Because I'm about to close. You're about to close. Um, like I said, um, just try to look at, at, at people as, as your fellow humans and not like a, a personality. When you do that, you empathize with them. And when you do that, you understand each other. We don't always need to agree to get along. Yeah, so uh, what you're simply saying is you guys are also human, you have feelings, you have emotions, just like the people behind the keyboard when they're e typing. Exactly, that. and we also have free will. Yeah. We might, some of the stuff that we, we say might not align with what you believe in, but I think at the end of the day, that is the freedom that everyone fought for. We all can't think the same. I'm sure when, even when you did those uh, songs, you, you knew there would be some backlash, but I, maybe you just didn't know to what extent. Uh, to be honest with you, we, we kind of expected it to yeah. run this long, maybe even longer. Wow. I wish you all the best, you guys. I really will hope uh, we get through this and uh, you can be able to do your music freely and people will still have your back. I will, I will always make music uh, for the people that want to listen to it. But if it reaches a stage where it's no longer sustainable for me because um, the bad outweighs the good, like I said, then I'll have to improvise and make another plan. But, yo, the music is in me, it's in my heart, and I'm at a place now where I've been wanting to quit, but I think there's still a few more things that I need to say. Nice. So we'll be waiting for that first long-awaited album? Yeah. Or I don't know if it's more singles that we'll be getting this yeah, year? I, like I said, every, every good thing is, it comes in threes. So I've done two albums, I'm hoping to do the third one, which should be my best one. Then I'd, I'd be happy then. Cool. Yeah. And also be waiting for the painting. <laughs> I, I sent him a photo. He said, he said, send me the photo. Sent him a photo a long time. Maybe, maybe, maybe now I don't even want that photo to be the one, not the painting. But but I started it already. <laughs> it's like, oh, thank you so much for coming through. Thank you for having coming. me, Helen. Thank you. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed the chat and uh, I hope you've heard him. They're human. Let's support them. They wronged you. You felt betrayed. Yes, you've expressed yourself. I think they've gotten the message. They've apologized. I think let's forgive them and see how much we can support them. Yes, so keep subscribing to the channel. We want to reach 100k subscribers, guys. So keep subscribing to the channel. This has been your girl, Helen. Bye-bye.